This is section 8.3, which is hyperbolas. We're going to talk about the geometry of a hyperbola, translations, eccentricity, reflective property, and long-range navigation. So a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane whose distance from two fixed points in the plane have constant difference. So the fixed points are the foci of the, the hyperbola, and the line through the foci is the focal axis, and the point on the focal axis midway between the foci is the center. The points where the hyperbola intersects the focal axis are the vertices. So we're going to look at that on the next slide here. Okay, so we have the center of the hyperbola, we have the two vertices, and we have the focus, just like with a parabola, how the focus is inside the parabola shape. Um, you can think of a hyperbola as two parabolas, uh, so each focus is kind of in that curved area. So the focal axis is the axis that goes through the vertices in the foci and the center. Um, the, so this distance, you can see on the second picture here, the distance from the center to the vertex, from each vertex, is A, and then the distance from the center to the focus is C, and then B is going to be our conjugate axis. So this right here, I'm gonna use a highlighter. So from vertex to vertex, right there, that's what we call the transverse axis. From vertex to vertex, the cord that reaches between those two points, and then the conjugate axis is the axis with length 2b, and we'll talk about the equations in b here in a minute, but the conjugate axis is the axis that's perpendicular, so it's a chord that's perpendicular to the transverse axis, um, and the conjugate axis has a length of 2b. Okay. So a lot of pictures here. Um, this is how to sketch a hyperbola. So it kind of helps to understand where the A and B are located. So um, when we were looking at ellipses, we knew that A was our distance from the center to the, to the vertex on the major axis, and B was our distance from center to minor axis. With a hyperbola, it's a little bit um, harder to visualize where B is located. So it helps if you kind of think of it as a rectangle, and that rectangle is going to create your two asymptotes, and that asymptote is going to shape what your hyperbola looks like. Okay, so these are hyperbolas centered at 0, 0. You can see that we have the dotted lines in for the asymptotes. So we can have hyperbolas that open to the left and right, or up and down. And we're going to look at examples of both of those today. Um, and then this is hyperbola with center that's at hk. So this is where we're going to summarize all the equations and information here on the next slide. Okay, so standard equation. So this is going to be our horizontal focal axis. So that means that the, the hyperbola opens to the left and right. And then this one is a vertical focal axis. So that means that our hyperbola opens up and down. So if we start with looking at our, that's a really bad sketch, let's try that again. Okay, a little bit better. So um, if we start with the horizontal focal axis, so if you notice the x part comes first. So if you look at the similarities between this and the ellipse, this time our a squared is always in our first, in the first fraction in the denominator, and b squared is always in the second fraction in the denominator, um, but the x and y can switch spots. So if the x is first, then it's going to open left and right. If the x is second, so the y is first, it's going to open up and down. So our focal axis for um, this first one is y equals k. You can see same idea as with the ellipses, so our foci would be h plus or minus c, and k, and then vertices would be h plus or minus a, comma k, whereas when we're looking at the vertical focal axis, we're adding and subtracting a and c to our k value instead of our h value, because it's 
translating it up and down. So our semi-major axis for both is A, semi-minor axis is B, and then we have a different Pythagorean relation for this one. So be careful to know that those kind of switch depending on which um, conic section you're looking at. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then the asymptotes are different depending on um, which one you're looking at. So the difference is if you have a horizontal focal axis, it's B over A. And if you have a vertical focal axis, it's going to be A over B. Okay, so example one is find the vertices and foci of the hyperbola. So the first thing is, this is not in standard form. I need it to be equal to 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 36. So that would give me x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. So that tells me that my center, I know it didn't ask for the center, but the center is at 0, 0 because I don't have any parentheses or plus or minus with the x or y. Um, because I notice that the x comes first, that tells me that this is going to open left and right. It helps my brain, at least when I'm doing these problems, to kind of sketch out just a picture of which direction. So that way I know if I'm adding the a and the c values to my h or my k. So if we look, our a, b, and c. So a would be 2, because it's the square root of 4, and b would be 3, as the square root of 9. And c, we're going to have to use our Pythagorean relation, so we're going to say c squared equals a squared, 4, plus b squared, which is 9. So c squared equals 13, so c is the square root of 13. So if we write down, so our vertices are going to be at... Um, plus or minus 2, 0, so to the left and right. Um, you could write those out separately, or you can write it as 1. And then the foci are going to be at plus or minus square root of 13, 0. Okay, example 2, finding the equation of a hyperbola. So find an equation of a hyperbola with foci at 0, 4, and 0, negative 4. So I like to... Kind of sketch this. So 0, 4, 0, negative 4, conjugate axis length of 2. So remember the conjugate axis has a length of 2b, so that tells me that my b value is 1 because it's going to be half of the 2. So that means I'm going to go 1 in either, so that distance right there is my 2b distance. Okay, so I don't know a. a is the distance from my center to um, each vertex. So we know that the parabola, or not parabola, hyperbola, I'm just going to sketch it in there, um, is somewhere between the center and the foci. So we know C though. We know C center to focus is 4. So we can use the fact that C squared, so 16, is equal to 1 squared, B squared, write that, plus A squared. So that means that A squared equals 15. So a is the square root of 15. So if I'm writing this out, the y is going to come first, and my center is at 0, 0. So y squared over a squared, so that would be y squared over 15, minus x squared over b squared, so 1 equals 1. Okay, example 3 is finding an equation of a hyperbola. Find the standard form of the equation for the hyperbola whose conjugate axis has endpoints. So this one's not centered at 0, 0. So we're going to go to negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4. So those are the conjugate axis endpoints. So that tells me that halfway in between is my center. So the center is at the point 2, 4. And it says the transverse axis has a length of 8, which means that A is half of that, so A is 4. So there's 4, 4. So we know our hyperbola looks something like that. So, and we know B. B is from our center to this edge right here. So that would be 3. 
and we don't know C, so we can calculate C. So C would be um, 4 squared plus 3 squared. Um, no, I don't need C, sorry. <laughs> I lost, lost my train of thought here. So I'm just writing the equation, so I only need C if I'm finding where the foci are located, but I don't need to in this problem. So it just is asking me to write the equation, which I have enough information for. So this opens up and down, so I know that Y is going to come first. So this would be Y minus 4 squared over 16 minus X minus 2 squared. So those are coming from the center, the 4 and the 2 over 9 equals 1. Okay, find the center vertices and foci of the hyperbola. So our center, if we start there, is going to be at negative 1, 0. I can tell that this is going to open left and right because the x is first in our equation. And then I'm going to make a little list here. A would be 2. B would be 3, and then I can find C by taking 4 plus 9, so it would be square root of 13. So my vertices, I'm going to add and subtract A from my H. So I would take negative 1 minus 2, that would give me negative 3, and negative 1 plus 2, that would give me 1. And then... The foci, it depends on if it wants an exact answer or if it wants an approximate answer. So if exact, I could write this as negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13, comma 0. If it wants a rounded decimal, then you can just type into your calculator neg negative 1 plus the square root of 13, get a value, or and then negative 1 minus the square root of 13 and get a value. Okay, the last thing is eccentricity of a hyperbola. So just like we talked about eccentricity of an ellipse, so the eccentricity of a hyperbola is C over A, um, and where A is the semi-transverse axis, B is the semi-conjugate axis, and C is our distance from the center to either focus. Okay, so that is all about hyperbola.